So there are some assumptions that go with the independent samples t-test about the underlying populations, and three of them are, are fairly important. The first one is the assumption of normality. We assume that the means of the populations follow normal distributions. Now, this isn't exactly the same, th same thing as saying that the underlying populations both need to be normally distributed. Um, now, I will say if our samples themselves are normally distributed, this is a good sign that the populations are normally distributed um, and probably things are going to work out. Uh, also, it's very likely that the populations are normally distributed and that the, and in particular, it's, it's, it's even more likely that the means, or excuse me, that the distribution of sample means will be normally distributed. For, so first of all, let, let's make this distinction. The, the population, uh, the variable within a population will typically be normally distributed. However, regardless of the underlying distribution, the distribution of sample means will typically be normally distributed, especially as sample sizes increase. This is what's called the central limits theorem. And here's the idea. So what is the distribution of sample means? The idea is that you, if I have a population and I pull a sample from that population and I throw and I write down what the mean of that sample is, and I throw it back into the population. And then I pull another randomly selected sample of the same size. I write down the mean, throw it back. And I pull out another randomly and I do this over and over and over again. I eventually come up with a, a whole list, basically a whole data set of means. And then those means will be distributed, right? Most will be more or less around the mean of the population. And there'll be a distribution of those means. And typically, the distribution of that mean, of those means, those sample means, will be normally distributed. Um, again, this is especially true when we use very large sample sizes. Um, the central limits theorem says that this will eventually um, become true. Also, if the underlying population is itself normal, then uh, the distribution of sample means will be, will be normal. And it's very typical that our underlying populations uh, would be normally distributed with, this, with, this, with whatever variable that we're using. But it is an assumption of the t-test um, that, the, that these, uh, the distribution of these sample means needs to be normally distributed, because that's how the whole thing works. Our next assumption is called the homogeneity of variance. That means that the, the two populations from which our samples come share the same, more or less equal variance. Um, that they, they may differ in terms of their means, but they don't differ in terms of their variance. Now, the t-test is actually fairly robust against this. Uh, the answers that we get and the inferences that we make when the populations are not of equal variance typically don't differ too much from what they are if they are of equal variance. Now, having said that, the assumption is that they have equal variance. That's how the t-test works. We can test whether or not they have equal variance. Um, the typical way to do this, particularly because SPSS does it automatically, is Levine's test. And so Levine's test is a test for differences in the underlying population, the likelihood that the underlying population, the two populations have different variances. A significant Levine's test, and Levine uses F, a significant F using Levine's test will tell us that um, more than likely that there is a difference in the variances of the two populations. Uh, if Levine's F is not significant, then we can say uh, we don't have any evidence that there's any differences uh, in the variance of these two populations. There's other tests besides Levine tests, there's Bartlett's test uh, and, and whatnot. Uh, Levine's, again, SPSS by default gives us the results of Levine's test. Um, so that's one that, that you're typically going to see. Now, if the variances are not the same between the two populations, right? So Levine, if Levine's is significant, or if we otherwise have some reason to believe that the variances are going to be different, then we use what's called Welch's t-test, right? And this is the t-test that we use when we can't assume equal variances. Uh, now look, Welch's t-test, the, the t itself is a little bit different, the, the degrees of freedom are a little bit different, the conclusions that we draw a little bit different. Not hugely different, but a little bit different, and so, and it's more conservative. So the reality is, if we were taking the most conservative approach, it's often appropriate to just use Welch's t, use that equal variance as not assumed, um, so we take a more, statistically speaking, more conservative approach to our hypothesis testing. So two assumptions, normality, 
uh, normality of the uh, distribution of the means, sample means, and then a homogeneity of variance. And then the final assumption is that we have independence, that the two samples are not related to each other in any way except for that they came from uh, people who were participated in the research. That should be the only thing that relates these two, these two groups together. Um, they should be independent uh, of one another. Uh, now, when they're not, there are ways that we can deal with that. We do repeated measures, we do um, uh, dependent samples, t-tests, etc. There's ways that we can deal with that. Uh, but uh, the underlying assumption of the independent samples t-test is that the two samples are independent of one another.